Hello. Um, this is the next section. This is called What's in a Rule? So let's get started. In the textbook, it looks like this. The assignment looks like this right now. There will be a video link, but I am making that video right now. So we'll get to that eventually. It'll be there. And the assignment looks like this. You download it, remember? You pull up Cami. And then I would open from my computer and look at that. I just downloaded this. So I can open it up and voila, new copy. And here we are. Anthony explains his representation to his dad, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we've got to go back and figure out who Anthony is. Okay, if you remember correctly, we we're talking about the Chen family. Anthony Chen. And they make tile pool borders. It's a very specific line of work. No, they probably do a lot of other things, but that's what we're talking about. They are making borders around pools. The pools happen to all be square, and the tiles are exactly one foot, and all the squares happen to be perfectly exactly um, a solid number of feet um, as well, a um, integer number of feet as well. Um, so we're going to go on to what's in the rule, and we're going to continue talking about this. We've tiled different sizes of pools, and we've talked about ways to measure them and all sorts of stuff like that. And we're going to continue with that, and we're going to talk about methods for coming up with a rule. That's why it says what's in a rule. Yeah, pretty fancy. So Anthony explains his representations to his dad. If you remember, he counted the middle tiles along each side of the square, each of the four sides, and then he added the corners afterwards. His model, uh, his uncle though, is unconvinced and makes a model of his own. Look here, Anthony. I think of the pools like this. So the uncle thinks of it as four chunks. Instead of this, the tiles along the sides of the square and the tiles in the corners, he thinks about it in chunks of two or three or four. And since he counts differently, he's gonna come up with a different rule. You'll see this. So let S represent the length of the side of the pool and T represent the number of tiles in the pool's border. Can you drag tiles to write a rule that represents Uncle Tajil's model? Okay, so we have the number of sides. We wanna find the number of tiles. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put T right there. Huh, it won't let me drag it, but oh, there it is. Okay, because we wanna find that out. I'm just gonna help you out with that. And I want you to think, what goes here? What times what? How many tiles and how many times are the same number of tiles counted? Take a moment, figure it out. I'm assuming that you paused. You paused and thought about it. And now I'm going to continue. Please try to figure it out first. All right, so the number of tiles is, well notice this is the, number, the length of the side of this square is one. And each of these squares are two. And there are four of them. The length of this side is two by two. And the length of the rows of tiles are three. And there are four of them. This is a three by three square. And the lines are four long. So notice these lines are always one longer than the length of the side. So however the side is, long the side is, I make it one longer. And there are four of them. So this right here, this formula, should also work for our, for our assignment from earlier. It's just a different way to think. Oh my gosh, in this model, you have always have one more tile than the length of the side, that's S plus one. Since each pool has four sides, you multiply by four, and you get the number of tiles. Four times one longer than the side of the square, because that's how the models work. And we can see it'll keep going like that, even for a five by five a square or whatever else. Okay, just so you know, that was in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write, okay. So what is a good rule? It is T equals four times S plus one. Remember, when I have a parentheses around that S plus one, I don't have to write a multiplication between that. So that's what I would write. That's what we're looking for. All right, this model shows something else. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. Um, just missed that. Let's keep going. Anthony thinks for a minute. 
Anthony knows his reasoning makes sense. So remember, Anthony counted it. Um, let's see. We'll go back to look at Anthony's thing really fast because I want to make sure you understand what he did. That was in tiling square pools. That was in. This one, I think. Nope, it's the next one. So next one. Here's what Anthony does. He puts tiles around the outside, four tiles, and then he fills in the corners. So he has four times one plus four. He does it in two steps. He has these four that he counts, and then those four. So we're taught what Anthony's saying is he's like, but my process that I did last class makes sense. I have the sides and then I have the corners and I add them up and I get the total. Okay, back to Anthony and his uncle. So we're noticing that they have different ways to count. Anthony's way seems right. His uncle's way also seems right. Hmm. Um, so both of theirs work. How could that be? Play the animation to see how Anthony showed the relationship between the two rules. Oh gosh, and look at that. So this model shows the number of tiles four times S plus one, where S represents the side of each pool. I'll start by moving the tiles away from each side and arranging them in under each pool like this, says Anthony. Okay, so he's showing this is four times s plus one because there are four chunks and each of them is one longer than the side. He's showing how his version is the same. Now he takes one away from each side. Now he has four times s plus four. Four times s, side is two long, plus four. And he has four, three, uh, four times s, which is three plus four. So both rules make, rules make sense. So this way looks more like his, like there's a plus in between these. So if he divides it out differently, it shows that the model is actually the same. Now he can make it look like his model and these four are left over that he took off the end are the corners. So you can see that they are the same thing. They count the same thing and they count it right. So they're always going to agree with each other. Make sure that um, you understand that. So this model shows four times S plus one equals number of tiles. This is an example of the what. Oh, we're gonna get there in a moment. Because we haven't talked about that property yet. Okay, so we've got that. Let me make this go into the corner. All right, so that's cool. Okay, your rule works, Uncle Tajil, but so does mine, Anthony says. I use the concrete method to show that four S times S plus one equals four S plus four. Now the one on the right. S plus one plus four. Oops, I can't believe that they even bothered to put that in. Um, four times S plus one is what his uncle came up with. And 4s plus 4 is what he came up with. So he just showed that his way of counting is a different way, but it makes the same number. And what do we call this? What do we call this property? That this is the same as that? Well, you're used to putting a line like this and a line like that and multiplying 4 times s and 4 times 1 and we get 4s plus 4. That's called the distributed property of multiplication. And it's a very useful thing to know about. Now, as you can see, the property of this property of multiplication, it's just something that we notice. It's not something someone invented. Someone just realized, oh my gosh, that's, that's a thing that happens every time. So I might as well write it down. So this model shows that what? Four times S plus one equals, when I distribute, four times S makes four S. And the plus hangs out right where it is. And four times one makes four. In other words, 
the way I think about it when I'm distributing is I multiply the four times everything in the parentheses, each term. Now terms are the things being uh, separated by a plus sign. So there's a term that's S and a term that's one and I have to multiply it. Otherwise, I'm not make, making the whole thing four times as big. I have to make all of its parts four times as big. And that's why I have four S's and a four, four ones. This is an example of the distributive property of multiplication. And over, I'm not actually sure what they want, over addition. Okay over addition. Nobody says that. So that's okay. Because why? We're distributing between these two things that are being added. There's addition that's in there. But the addition isn't happening. We're just distributing and there happens to be addition involved. So we say it's over addition. If this book asks for that, great. You'll never have to say distributed property of multiplication over addition ever again in your life after this class. Okay, explain why the number of tiles in border of a pool is the same as the area of the border. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to start talking about area. Now remember, area is how much space things take up, and it's measured in squares. That's my hint to you before we go get to that. Okay, so this is called the distributive property. We just showed the distributive property that it works. In real life, it's just a thing. It happens. When I write it one way or write it the other way, they mean the same thing. They give me the same number. They do the same thing. They're identical, really. So those are called, just so you know, another fancy word is equivalent expressions. This right here, 4 times s plus 1 is equivalent to 4s plus 4. These are equivalents. Why? Because they'll always be equal. You could say they're equal expressions, but they're not numbers. And we always say equal for numbers. Well, I could write that in here. Why not? So what I mean is <clears throat> four, four S plus one. That's good to have these things is equivalent to four S plus four because they'll always make the same number. 15 is equal to 15. So whenever we have expressions with numbers, with letters, variables, those can't necessarily be equal because we only, we reserve the word equal um, for numbers. So you could say, equal is only used with numbers. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, so since these are both expressions and neither of them are, strictly speaking, a number, we don't say that they're equal. We say they're equivalent. And I'll say Yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. All right, moving on. So many things to fill in. I appreciate your patience as we go through this book because it is a new book to me and I'm always noticing things that need to be added. That's pretty good, Uncle Tajio replies, but there's another way you can look at it. Shouldn't the number of tiles in the border be the same as the area of the border? Is he right? Think about it. Okay, so we have the area of the border. That's what? Think about it. I'm pausing and then I'm going to explain it. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so area is measured in squares. The area of this blue is one square, one square, whatever, foot, because they're measuring these in feet. This is four square feet because they're four squares and they're each a foot by a foot. This is nine square feet, this blue square, because it's there. each square is a foot by a foot and there are nine of them. Okay, so the tile around the outside, it's only one square in length, right? So, so the area of this thing is just how many squares there are in it. In other words, if I measure around the outside, 
the number of tiles around the outside of this thing is the same as the area of those tiles because you're counting how many there are. Let's see how they say it here. Because each tile is a square foot, that is one foot long on each side, the area of each tile is one square foot. So one, two, three, four, five, those are each a square foot. because They're square and they're a foot on each side. Look at the pool, the first has eight tiles around the border. Yep, which take up a space of eight square feet. And this takes up a space of 12 square feet and so on. So the area, instead of the length, which is just counting how far around on the outside, each of these tiles takes up one square foot. So the number of tiles is the area in square feet. Hopefully that makes sense. We could type that in. Since each tile takes up exactly one square foot in area, if I count the tiles, I am also counting the number of square feet in the total area. Number of tiles is the area that they take. Let's see, same amount as the area that they take up. Hopefully that makes sense. There are eight tiles, they take up eight square feet because each tile is one square foot. Just remember, whenever we talk about square anything, square feet, square inches, we're talking about area. We're measuring things in squares. So Uncle Tajio says, what we really have here is a little square inside a bigger square. There's a blue square and then a big square around it. Blue square, big square around it. Okay. Shouldn't the area of the border be the area of the big square minus the area of the little square? So notice here I have nine squares. If I take the blue one out of the middle, I have eight squares, which is the area of this guy, uh, which is how many black tiles there are. This one, we have a four by four square. But if I take out these four on the inside, then I have the 12 leftover black tiles. So he's thinking about it that way. What does that rule look like? Well, that would make this rule according to his uncle. I have this guy and that guy. Now we have to think about what's going on. This is a much messier formula. It looks scarier, but what he's saying is I have a bigger square minus a smaller square. And we're going to talk about that soon. So what rule? This doesn't look like your rule at all. Anthony thinks for a moment. Could Uncle Tajil's new rule be right? Well, they wouldn't talk about it this long if it wasn't, right? <laughs> what is going on here? Let's talk through this. Anthony knows that this works. That's the version he got. Well, no, he got 4s plus 4. His uncle got 4 times s plus 1. And they're both valid rules for the number of tiles in the border of the square of the pool with side lengths s. Can he also show that this right here is another way to write down one of those two rules? Anthony begins, I know that each pool has its border form a big square. Okay, the length of one side of that square is the length of the side of the pool plus 2 or s plus 2. So if I notice this guy right here, he's one in length, right? But the square around the outside is three in length, two more than the length of the pool that's blue. This is two in length, but the square on the outside is four in length, two more than the blue pool. This is three in length, this is five in length, two more than the blue pool. So he's got that figured out, great. Next, we've got, oh, he's going to do it his way. So he's kind of dissecting them. He's got his four corners and then his four sides. And then he looks at his model and moves the tiles around again. Okay, so what's he going to do to show S squared minus, or S plus 2 squared minus S squared? It looks like it has to say play. Let's push play and see what happens. 
there's s by s. That's s squared. That is true. That is a very important thing to understand. Mm, this is interesting. So that was a lot of thinking. So he thinks that the area of each pool is s squared. So remember, whenever I have a square, I multiply the sides to find its area. So if this is a two by two square, I multiply two times two to get four. Whatever the length of the side is, I multiply it by itself. And that's what this symbol means. Squared means to multiply by itself. And it honestly literally comes from squares like this. I have a length of a side and a length of a side, and I can find the area by multiplying it by itself. Three times three makes nine, and there are nine squares in this. So this right here, this first S squared, represents the pool. This 4s plus 4 equals 4s plus 4. That's his way that he found the area. If I add the pool on the inside to the tiles, I should get a total amount. Now, what's this? Well, let's see, s plus 2, that's 3 instead of 1. 3 by 3 makes this entire square. So 3 times 3 makes 9 total. This one's 4 by 4, so this should be 16 total. So if I have the 4 on the inside plus the black tiles on the outside, I should have a total of a big square that's 4 by 4, which is 16 total. And if that's true, this makes sense. All right. Whoa. Oh, he's taking things away from each side. Whoa, look at all those bubbles and things. Wow. All right. So he's using algebra to show that if s plus 4 plus 4 makes that, I take the s squared away from this side, and I take the s squared away from the other side, I get this. Now, this is called an algebraic proof. They are literally doing these right now, right now, in geometry class. So um, we don't expect you to go super deep into this, but if you like this, get excited because you're going to do this in geometry. No numbers, no correct solutions, but we just showed that 4s plus 4 is the same as that. And that's what he was trying to show, that the tiles around the outside are the big square minus inside square that's blue. Okay, so that's a lot of work. Let's see what they want us to do here. What's in a rule? Explain using words and pictures why this is so. Now, I'm not going to make you necessarily use pictures the way that they did, okay? You can say what they represent. So for example, S plus one squared. Just so you know, I push shift six. That's how we write squared when we're typing. Okay, it doesn't look like squared when I'm typing because it's not smaller, but if you do that on a computer, it will um, sometimes turn it into a square, but it will certainly understand what you're typing. So that is the area of the big square. And then S squared is the area of the pool. And 4s plus 4 is the number of tiles around the border. Okay, and we know that because this, the big square, this big square is always two bigger than the pool because it has these two on the end. So the big square is always going to be two bigger than the small pool and will put by itself to find the area. So this is a four by four square and it has a two by two square inside of it. Four by four and two by two. Okay, that's why this is two bigger than that. All right. And so what does that help me with? Okay, so let's talk about this. We're gonna show that why this equals that equals that. Okay. S 
this is what we want in these types of problems. We're going to say s plus 2 shift 6 squared minus s squared equals. Now, I'm telling you, if you prefer the pictures and if you want to copy what that video did earlier, that's great. But sometimes that can be actually hard to explain in words. And I feel like this way, when, when we get it to an equation, it's kind of listing things out in an order that plus four. I'm gonna start with this. When I look at this, this is saying, the big square is the smaller area of the pool plus the tiles in the border. Let's see if I can make it. What I wanted. So this right here says the big pool is the small pool, or the big square is the small pool plus the area of the, um, the tiles around the outside. Because these are the pieces that we're playing with. Okay, that's great. All right, so if I take away, I'm going to write it a slightly different way because I think it makes more sense. This is the way we're going to write it in later algebra problems. Minus s squared. Minus s squared. That one won't fit. Well, maybe. There. All right. So now I'm taking away the pool on the inside because that's the area of the pool right there. And now we're left with just the tiles. Now, if I take that away, these things cancel out. You've learned to do this, I think, in algebra class. So now I'm left with S plus two. Ah, this is a lot of writing, and I'm sorry to make you watch this, but this is the math that we're doing. It's much easier to write with paper and pencil. I promise you that, but um, that's where we're at right now. And now we have the area of the pool, and I take away the area of the pool. These cancel each other out. There's nothing left. There was a pool. I took it away, so all that's left is the 4s plus 4. Oops, but I forgot to say it. I took away s squared from that side as well. When I take a pool This one, I'll have to do a little more. Oh, come on, really? Oh, well, that's fine. Remember when we're setting this up, we like to line up our equal signs. If you were doing it with pencil and paper, we would use like railroad tracks. Some of you learned how to do, and that's fine. So this right here, a little messy looking. Oh, I won't. 
okay? And that right there is what we're saying. If I have this, and I take away the S squared, I get that, okay? So hopefully this makes sense the way I explained it. If you have troubles with that, let me know. All right, this has a lot, a lot, a lot of things like that. Okay, so we just did that, wonderful. Anthony's dad and uncle are very impressed. Not only has Anthony shown them that there are multiple representations of the pool problem, he has also shown them how different looking symbolic representations can be made using the same, to look the same. So this and this and this are all ways to keep track of how many tiles there are in the border. This one counts these four separate from the corners. This one breaks them into chunks of three and then there are four chunks of three. This one thinks about it as a big square minus the inside square. Big square minus the inside square. And they all count the same thing. These are called equivalent expressions. And I bet that's what it's going to say next. Um, even, hey, look at that. Even though the expressions look very different, each one can be transformed to match the other one using algebraic properties. In mathematics, such expressions are called equivalent expressions. Expressions are equivalent when they represent the same number, no matter what value is substituted. So I can't tell you what number these are because I don't know what S is. But I do know that once you plug in an S, they will all make the same thing, okay? So let's try that. What if I plugged in 10? Four times 10 is 40, plus four is 44. If this was 10, it'd be 10 plus one is 11, times four is 44. 10 plus two is 12, Squared is 144. 144 minus 10 squared. 10 times 10 makes 100. 144 minus 100 makes 44. If I plug in 10 for S, all of these say that it'll take 44 squares to go around a 10 by 10 pool. That's what it's saying. All right, almost done. You learn how different representations to analyze a problem. How to use different representations. You also saw how many different representations are connected, how these different representations are connected. Okay, so here's one symbolic representation, another, and another. They're all the same thing. They all give the same answer. Okay, so you could plug in any of them right here for, for the tiles in the border, and they would all work. And they would all make the same graph. They're all the same. Okay, oh, we're at the summary. That's great. Sounds like we need to finish our assignment. Evaluate each of these at your assigned number and record the results in the table. What do you notice? It doesn't say an assigned number. I guess that must be me. Well, I said 10. You can do that. But here's what I'll say is actually, I would rather you do this with your own number. So pick another one, anything smaller than 10 and bigger than five. So five, six, seven, or eight, or nine. Five, six, seven, eight, or nine. That way we're not doing something else. So use five S equals five, six, seven, eight, four, nine. Okay, and figure out what T is. What do you notice? They should all be the same, my friends. And that's it. I'm done talking about this. That's what an equivalent expression is. I hope you learned something new about equivalent expressions and turning them into each other. Now, learning algebra helps us to switch expressions really seamlessly using math. Instead of having to do all of that tile shuffling and explaining why it works, you can just be like, oh yeah, S minus S is zero and this is, you can just do your algebra and it's a lot faster and a lot easier to handle these expressions that don't actually have a number attached to them until you tell me what the variables actually mean. This is really, really, really important in science, okay? Because we have a million variables that we have to keep track of in science, and they're always changing, but we need to be able to do math with them. But how can I do math unless I know what they are? Algebra. You can make them add and subtract and do all of this type of stuff before you know what they are, what numbers they actually equal. And that is a very powerful tool. 
That's all I got to say about that. Have a wonderful time watching this, and I hope it goes smoothly.